Hello, our friends. Oh, welcome back. Welcome back. And so tomorrow, impact is expected. Brace for impact. Yeah, we get, we have a lot of really interesting things going on right now. It's pretty wild. So the uh, flare that we, well, the CME, I should say, well, no, the flare did produce a CME, as we were talking about. Now, originally they were saying 7.9. Here they're showing 7.4. But the impact is expected tomorrow. And they're expecting it to affect uh, areas more poleward than 50 degrees the most. But we can get Aurora mm -hmm. all the way down to Pennsylvania. Oh, well, that'll be exciting if anybody's in Pennsylvania and you get that on camera. Show us. Yes, or northward from there as well as we're looking at it. Yeah, you know, I think the sun is just starting. I mean, it's just starting. We're at the very beginning of the solar cycle, and already we got action. Yeah, uh, we got a lot of action. We have a lot of things going on. It's it's pretty pretty wild stuff. So expect. Let's see a G1 minor geomagnetic storm watch in effect for the ninth. Then we have a G3 strong for December 10th and G2 moderate for December 11th. And again, primarily poleward of 50 degrees. And you, you could have power system voltage irregularities. Possible false alarms might be triggered on some protection devices. As far as spacecraft systems may experience surface charging, increased drag in low Earth orbit satellites and orientation problems can occur. Navigation, intermittent satellite navigation, GPS problems, including loss of lock, and increased range error may occur. Uh, high frequency radio may be intermittent. And as we said about the aurora, you could see it as low as Pennsylvania to Iowa to Oregon. So it doesn't sound super severe, but it does sound like there might be a little disruption here and there. Yeah, yeah. And again... You know, it's the times that we're in and the fact that our shields are down. Mm -hmm. And we're just getting started, you know, because we just came off the low period. So now as we're going to go up now towards uh, heading towards a maximum in this solar cycle, what will that bring? And like, what will 2024, 2025 bring? I know, you know, it's only time will tell, really. So this is from Edgar Casey's ARE. And we're going to cover something that made me pull this up. So Casey said that when we see noticeable eruptions in the long, quiet volcanoes of Vesuvius or Pele, then three months later, there will be major earthquakes along the southern coast of California that will cause an inundation of the land from Salt Lake in Utah to the southern portions of Nevada. <clears throat> Hence why we're not there anymore, because right. we felt the rumbling, we felt Ridgecrest, mm -hmm. we felt the uh, Tanapah, and, uh, you know, even though family was there and family is not ready to, to get going, uh, we decided we'd go and maybe they'll come. Yeah, and we saw the fault line map, too. <laughs> yeah, if you look at that fault line map, you know, you can understand what's going on. So Vesuvius, Pele, you know, those are key volcanoes. Uh, to watch, and I'm always on the watch for those, as are so many other people that are familiar with Edgar Casey's predictions. And we'll say hi to Brother Larry in Texas because he, he loves Edgar Casey. And so we see the alert level for Pele <coughs> raised to yellow. So we have a yellow alert level. Now, the last eruption of this volcano took place in 1932. Pele is the deadliest volcano of the 20th century, by the way. And Pele is forming the northern end of the island of Martinique and is the most active volcano of the Lesser Antilles Arc. And it's a beautiful island. I was actually there. It was really, really beautiful and wonderful, nice people. The volcano has a history of VEI-4 eruptions, with the last taking place from 1902 to 1905. The catastrophic eruption destroyed the city of St. Pierre, becoming the type example of Pelian eruptions and marking the onset of modern uh, volcanological studies of the behavior of pyroclastic flows. So, you know, this is one to watch. And mm, feels like we're really heading very close to some major, major events. Mm -hmm. And the galactics, again, they told us uh, the conjunction can cause major Earth 
issues. It can cause major earth changes. They're not exactly sure what to expect, but they are expecting definitely rumbling. They want people to be aware, prepared, you know, to take care of yourself for a couple weeks where you're at. And the words to you were the last time that this happened with the with it going into, uh, you know, the air sign as well um, was basically a time when the mountains moved is oh, how yeah. they put it. That's right. The, the mountains did move for sure. <laughs> that That's how they put it. It, it. it moved mountains. And so we will definitely keep our eyes open and see. And guess what? We got another just about grazing the earth asteroid flew past the earth at 0 0.05 of a lunar distance so this is a real real close one it was actually the number 100th to fly between within a, a lunar distance by earth this year and the fifth so far this mo, mo this month and i'm getting tongue-tied guys we got back from a four four mile cold hike and it yeah, got it got cold. pretty cold at the end when the sun was going down. Yeah, it did get really cold, guys. So this is the eighteenth closest flyby on record mm -hmm. and the fifth of twenty twenty. So eighteenth on record and only the fifth in twenty twenty. What does that tell you? Um, uh, you know, it tells me that things are ramping up. Uh, yeah, I guess that would be a good statement to make and the death toll climbs to 24 over 555 wow, 555,000 homes affected in southern thailand's worst floods in 50 years thailand and uh, you know vietnam uh, the philippines they were all battered this year uh, just battered with the storms and there's you could just see I mean, there's so much cropland that's underwater farmlands residential areas just deep underwater you know if we could just direct things over to the american southwest and uh there's got to be the technology and the science to mitigate all this that we see there has to be you know we know it's out there we've seen declassified documents so why aren't they being put into effect you know no, it wouldn't be beneficial for the elites. And we have an unusually large tornado. This hit Saudi Arabia. And we were just talking on the other channel that Saudi Arabia, I think, was like the third safest country from Earth changes. But these are changing times as yeah. well. So this is one of the largest ever documented in the country. There's videos here. You can see this is massive. Mm -hmm. And wow. Yeah, pretty, pretty scary. Tornadoes are scary. I had one pass really close to to me at one point in time we were in the car and we were just basically saying our prayers and kind of <laughs> closing your eyes and bracing for impact but it, it crossed you know the road just ahead of us it was scary um that was in south carolina extremely rare tornado hits trieste as historic supercell barrels through the north Adi adriatic and so this is in italy Damaging hail uh, across Slovenia as well. And check that out. 2020 has been an incredible year. As, as incredible as it's been, something says 2021 is probably going to break the records that 2020 set. I know. You know, we're just watching things ramp up more every day. And so we have the uh, some parts of the Alps under 10 feet of snow. As, you know, record storms are barreling down there. And this is parts of Italy and Austria that has been building. And we have a cold snap bringing unseasonable snow to parts of southeast Australia. And again, the extremes, they are getting more extremes. You know, whether it's record cold, record heat, record snow, record flooding, record drought. It's just record after record after record. Vinyl records? <laughs> well, those are a thing of the past but in some places making a comeback. Yeah. And we have some mystery ground shaking and loud boom in Escambia County in Florida. So a loud boom heard by some rumblings were heard and felt across parts of this county December 4th, and the source remains a mystery. And, you know, we've had a lot of um, sinkholes as well. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been a tremendous amount of military aircraft movement. And again today... Uh, right after we got done doing the first video, I was just posting it up on like Brightian and BitChute. And I hear, you know, like 
just this real loud sound like something coming really low so I go running out to to locate it and there's this i'd say it was at about 10,000 feet um really huge military aircraft with gigantic propellers i yes. think there was four of them i think it was four propellers but this thing was huge uh, i guess some sort of troop or cargo carrier and again flying real low yeah. and i went and checked the radar and there's no sign of it on the radar there's no sign of it on any of the flight trackers and stuff there's an awful lot of unusual military activity going on definitely and we've seen this before in recent years mm -hmm. you know that three sun effect which they say is caused by ice crystals up in the atmosphere well, they're gonna have some reason and some will say it's nibiru as well uh, you know it's interesting that uh, we are Many of us have firm opinions on Nibiru, either for or against, or Planet X, you know, the nemesis system. Um, it, it's almost like a religious thing in some ways with some of the belief systems that we have set up. It is, and belief systems can be used as a tool for good or for evil, and unfortunately, the those that are in the know and that are controllers, they use our belief systems to just control. Yeah, I've, I've always gotten the feeling that um, Nibiru is more of a 4D, you know, planet, which will become visible as we're rising. Um, and are you, I know you've, you've done some remote viewing on it. Yeah. Is, is that what your take is? I've seen it. It's, well, when I s look at it, it looks 3D, but also I do see a rising of our consciousness, and that's going to allow us to see it the way I saw it, so... And again, you saw it as kind of a dead, lifeless Thank planet you. that's been basically kind of assimilated into the Borg. No, it's turned into a mechanical thing. More of a ship now than a planet. Yeah, it was that. So we have a new mysterious illness that kills one and prompts mass hospitalizations in India. And I was waiting to report on this because this first popped up like a couple of days ago. And to see if anything else popped up. Uh, you know, there's there's been so many new illnesses. Uh, it's it's again, it's popping up like mushrooms in 2020. You had a never before seen virus in Brazil, new swine flu in China, another mysterious tick-borne viral disease in China, and an unknown illness in Bolivia. There's about 30 new and 38 re-emerging diseases right now around the world, and it feels like there's something around the corner that's going to be very big and and. That's not the, it's not exactly the plague upon the land right now, but it feels like there really is something bigger coming. You know, when I was looking at this just now, it, it came to me that this is some type of massive entity that attacked a lot of people. Interesting. You know, recognize as we look at a very curious UFO in Egypt that seems to be spawning more UFOs. And I'll give you guys all the links as always. Some things that might appear to be pure energy, you know, they're beings. They are conscious beings. And I've talked about this before. Um, I think in ages past, you know, when we, as we go through these different yugas, these different ages, you know, we, we were much more advanced than we are now. I think we had a lot more abilities, natural abilities, to perceive other entities. And now that's increasing and that's starting to happen again. And those entities can also see us. Maybe there's some that weren't able to see us either. Uh, and now they can. And so you're going to have all sorts of different encounters going on. Yeah, and it's definitely okay and it's normal. It's nothing to be panicked about. If you don't know what to do, process it by writing it down so at least that that emotion has been expressed. Yeah, we're going to be seeing more and more stuff in the skies. And then eventually we're going to be getting introduced <laughs> to some beings. And they'll probably say, oh, hey, you know, this is our, our brothers, the Pleiadians. Yeah. And they might fail to say, well, these are actually Pleiadians. They're under draconian control. The minor details, right? Yeah, who, they, who this particular group happens to work for. Mm -hmm. So interesting here. Now, this could be a bigger ship 
over and above the building. When I was in Charlotte, oh gosh, many years back, like 12, 13 years ago, I saw something like this and uh, we were actually with a big group of friends. There was like 16, 20 of us. Everybody was staring at it and everybody else was uh, staring at it in downtown Charlotte too. We couldn't figure out what these lights were. It looked very much like this. Mm -hmm. Right. I, you know, this one first, it struck me as a satellite, but then I'm like, no, 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 wait just a minute. It feels like part of a, a bigger ship that wants to remain cloaked. Oh, we are going to see some things, my friends. Yep. Thank you guys so much for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Uh, we have a couple new yep. patrons and we'll shout them out next video. Uh, we couldn't do it without you guys. Anybody that needs to set up an appointment, just reach out to us at either eearts at protonmail.com or evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com. As always, God bless and namaste. Namaste.